show because I call your name so much till you're a part of the show. Like I, I call your name religiously, like you're part of the show. <laughs> Are we up? <laughs> okay. Uh, everybody, why don't you turn around and give the people in Facebook? I decided tonight to go live for the people in Facebook. Why don't you turn around and just tell everybody, hey! hey! Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be powerful. Okay, get your Bibles and I'm going to try to teach this real, real fast. No. I was trying to make a restaurant, but I don't know if that's going to happen. But anyway, 59, you're leaving your 50s. Jesus, help me. I think uh, also, Antoinette, if you can run upstairs and get that bag for me, um, that gift that I have for, um, what's it called? It's in my office. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm trying to fight with this thing. So how many are here for the first time? It's your first time in the, in the class. If you can raise your hand so I can welcome you to the class. Yes, 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 yes. I know it's going to be a blessing. Come on. And for the sake of those that have been uh, coming, if you all can just give me just a minute to, um, to kind of brief the people that just came in on where we are. Can you turn me up in the house and, and turn these monitors up? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Thank you. It affects the microphone if it's not. Um, so if we can put up, uh, I want to put up the homeostasis uh, uh, diagram, if you don't mind. Uh, I want to put up the homeostasis diagram and um, to give them an idea of why we are doing this and why God had me to, to start this master's class, to start the master's class, and why the Lord has been very, very um, specific with me about not making this class a circus because it is for the learned, meaning it is for the people who desire to learn and to grow. I was watching, um, and I don't, you know, frequent all the time Facebook, I go on, I do what I need to do, but one day, um, Corey, where are you? Because I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for you to come on. Yeah, I'm not here. Come on. Uh -huh. um, I was looking at Facebook and uh, saw your testimony, and it blessed me in such a tremendous way. I mean, for me to see you, stand up, sweetheart. You, yeah, he's looking at me like me. I, 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 saw, I saw your testimony, and when I tell you, it, it, it moved me in, in, in such a way, literally to tears, because I, I've watched your growth. I, I've watched what God has done in your life, and I've watched your faithfulness, and, and it just, I was overwhelmed at your maturity and your growth, and it said to me that I'm not wasting my time. I'm not wasting my time. And so I, 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 I just, I, I love him. I, I, I love all of my spiritual children. And I call people in this class my spiritual children because I am called to, to nurture them and to put them in the place uh, and set them up so that they can succeed. And so when I started doing this uh, homeostasis, I don't, it's up. The homeostasis, the reason why it is called a master's class is because we can no longer be the Christians that just get in prayer and just call Jesus and not really have uh, intelligent discernment. That's what the scripture says in the book of Proverbs. It, it Turn there because I want to read that scripture. Please hurry, Curry. Please, please, please. In the book of Proverbs, I want to read this to you because it is very, 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 you got to know this because if you don't know this, I don't know where you're going. Just, just touch three people and said, if you don't know this scripture right here that Dr. Bynum is about to read, I have no clue of where you're going. 
say it again. If you don't know this scripture, if you don't know the meaning of this scripture, then I don't know where you're going. It says, uh, Proverbs, the fourth chapter. Come here. Proverbs, the fourth chapter. Okay, I got it. Let me put a little reverb. Hear, my sons, the instruction of a father, and pay attention in order to gain and to know intelligent discernment, comprehension, and interpretation of spiritual matters. A lot of people have common sense, but they don't know how to discern and to comprehend with an intelligent discernment, with an intelligent discernment. What do I mean by that? Because when you're a baby, you do things um, like a baby does them. And you, you know, when you first get saved, you do call on Jesus. And we are to always call on Jesus. And uh, we, we, we're never not to be able to call on him because of what that name represents. But how many people in this building would become very annoyed if all a person did every time they saw you was call your name? Yes. Yes. Okay, wow. I said something right there. Wow. That was a deep revelation. Wow. Yes. It was simple, but it was deep. Yes. It's just Miss Cummins, Miss Cummins, Miss Cummins, Miss Cummins, Miss Cummins, Miss Cummins. Miss Commons, Miss Commons, Miss Commons. Oh, Miss Commons, Miss Commons, Miss Commons. After a while, you turn around and say, "What? <laughs> like, like, what do you want? What do you want?" And so, when you've been uh, a Christian for a certain amount of time, then the Lord is expecting intelligent dialogue from you. He's expecting to communicate with you on a different level than he does with other people. Why? Because I come to that level where I am no longer just a Christian. I'm, 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 I'm no longer just a person that, that, that says, I done gave my heart to Jesus. Now I am an ambassador. I'm an ambassador, which means I move in the land on behalf of God. I didn't, I didn't get nobody to say nothing right there. I move in the land on behalf of God. And because I move in the land on behalf of God, I have to be able to intelligently speak on his behalf. So I can't walk around in society. I cannot walk around in corporate America. I cannot walk around in high pro profile places talking about Jesus. Just Jesus. People say, do you have an answer for me, Jesus? You're talking to multi-millionaires and billionaires. And they said, I'm going through something right now. Can you, can you just give me a word from the Lord Jesus? You're walking in the bank and you're talking to people in the bank. And, and the person is waiting on you. And they're trying to process a loan for you. And they said, my daughter is just sick and, 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 and my wife is having a breakdown. Could, could you just tell me something, Jesus? That's not an intelligent answer. That's not an intelligent answer. And so what has been happening is the people that are refusing to go to that next dimension in God are the people that are pulling back into this, what I call spiritual ignorance. And we're there by permission because that's all I know. So in other words, if I don't want God to press me any further than where I am right now, then I just stay in tongues all the time and I just stay... And see, that's what I love about Dr. Boyd. Before Pastor Boyd went on to be with the Lord, he would tell us to pray. And I remember the night we were going to move into this building. And Pastor had me to pray that night. You'll never forget it. <laughs> and it was below zero outside, and all of us had on coats. And Pastor had us walking around. None of this was in here, and that platform was hardwood. And the ground in the middle was all broke up. So it was just sidewalk all around. And he brought us in here, no heat, nothing. And he just said, now some of y'all remember that. He said, he said we're going to pray. And they said, it's below zero, Pastor. And he said, that's all right, but we're going to pray. So the whole church had to come that night. And I remember we were walking around. And Pastor was standing here with his coat on. I mean, everybody had coats on. And they was walking around praying. And they was walking around praying. And we got around a couple times. And all of a sudden, I was walking by Pastor. 
and he reached over and touched my shoulder. And I looked up and he said, come on up here. And he looked at me, he said, the pastor wants you to pray. And I said, yes, sir. And I started praying. He said, English. And I said, I looked back up. He said, I don't want no tongues. I want you to pray English. And I'm looking like he want me to pray English. And so I said to him, him and I, we on the stage kind of discuss. I said, but pastor, you know, I, got, I just, you know, sometimes, you know, when I start out praying, I have to pray in the spirit. He said, no. He said, tonight, I want to know what the spirit is saying in you. I want, I, I want, I want English. He said, no, I want you to put something in this atmosphere. And for one hour, pastor will tell you, for one hour. I thought he was going to make me stop praying after 15 minutes, and we were on a fast. For one hour, I had to stand up here and pray in English. He said, I want you to prophesy and put in the building what God wants to do in the building. I'm not hearing y'all talking to me. And so he said, I want you to pray. And so I kept praying, I kept praying. And that night, by the time I got finished, remember I fainted off the stage. I think you and Brother Wooten caught me. Because, I mean, you praying and you fasting, you ain't got no food in yours, but those are a weather. And somebody just made you pray for a solid hour. I didn't know it then, and I don't think he knew it either. But what he was doing was, he was, he was initiating me into the intelligence of the Spirit. Oh, my God. He was teaching me right then how to pray intelligent prayers. He was teaching me how to have dialogue, how to speak on behalf of God. I ain't hearing y'all. I ain't hearing y'all. How would you feel if every time the Lord talked to you, you said, Lord, I'm looking for a word from you. Shut it out of You'd be like, what? Shut it out of God, I need my rent paid. I just need your head out of the whole city. Yeah, I I'm not. I'm not getting y'all to talk back to me right there. I'm not getting y'all to talk back to me right there. God, I just need you to hear my body. Well, God, what should I do? What should I do? Because I need to go down here and, 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 and get my kids out of trouble. He shut out my higher. No, when you are in trouble, you want divine dialogue. When you're going through something, you want to help God speak something that is a divine dialogue. Okay, if you want to hear God speak something that is a divine dialogue into your situation, then what about what God wants you to do for his people in his stead? Oh God. So then we have to, watch this, so then we have to know intelligent discernment. We need to know, watch this, intelligent comprehension. In other words, watch this, of spiritual matters, of spiritual matters, which means now I am being called from the intellect and the intelligence of man. And I am being called now to learn the intelligence of the spirit. Because now it's spiritual matters. Yes, yes, yes. Do you know the intelligence of the spirit? Do you know how to dialogue with the spirit? Do you know how to handle the changes of the spirit? Wow. Do you know how to recognize when, watch this, when the enemy is trying to switch you and when the spirit is trying to change you? am I talking to right now? Who am I talking to right now? Because if we don't learn that, if we don't learn what God is teaching us in this classroom, we will never be people that know how to mount up and become equals to people that are in this society. Because they are intelligent. While we in church talk about Jesus. Jesus. I'm not hearing y'all talk to me. That's why when I sit down now, when I talk to people that are, that, are, that are worldly minded and I have these kind of conversations with them, they are intrigued. They're saying, tell, tell me more. I said, no, no, no. It's more to the spirit than that. Because the spirit is trying to cause you to become a pristine person.
person in your mind. The spirit is trying to teach you how to elevate your mind into a realm where there is no competition and the enemy cannot combat you from that level. Oh, I just said something right there. I just said something right there. So then here we are. Here we are. Homeostasis. Homeostasis. But what does that got to do with prayer, Dr. Vine? Homeostasis. Because you start out with a spiritual variable. In other words, you start out with, with your spirit man being balanced. I mean, when you come to prayer, watch this, and you are, and you are an intercessor. And I, and I got, I got to make, make some differences here because everybody should pray. Everybody should pray. Everybody should pray. The Bible says pray without ceasing. But then there are some, like the Daniels and the Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego, like the ones that are like Ezekiel, like the prophets Elijah and Elisha. Yeah. They're called to be interceptors. Wow. That, that's a different level of a praying person. Because an intercessor is an interceptor. Right, right, right. In other words, I'm called to interrupt what the devil is about to do to you. You know, you know, you watch it, you watch it a lot of football now while they run it. And that's how, you know, Alabama won because the ball intercepted the ball. In other words, you think you're going to catch it. But then God bring an intercessor out of nowhere and they reach up in the spirit. They don't even know you. But because the Lord has taught them spiritual intelligence of spiritual matters, they know when they're hitting something in the spirit that has nothing to do with them. And they intercept what the devil was about to do to you. Who am I talking to? And so if you're going to be an intercessor, then you cannot be a person that you are always the prayer's priority. I just said something right there. Well, Lord, do it for me. And oh, God, I just need your help. And oh, oh Lord, I just fix my bike. And, and help me with my teeth. And... and, and Pay my rent. And pay, pay, <laughs> my, my toe hurt. It's infected. And, and, and it, can't, it, can't, it can't be you. It, 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 it can't be you. I, I, I'm not hearing y'all talk to me. It cannot be you. Because God is calling for these kind of people to come into the realm of, of intercessory prayer in a balanced variable. In other words, when you're coming to do an assignment for God in prayer, you're not lopsided. The devil haven't thrown your emotions off to the point that you can't never get to the assignment because the enemy is trying to switch you over. Oh God, I can't hear nobody talking to me right there. Who am I talking to right there? So then, so then the homeostasis, watch this. Intellectual, intellectual diagram. Intellectual principle. But apply, says the Lord, to me, to prayer. Because here... We talk about it once before about food, but the variable is your balance. And then here comes a stimulus that produces change in the variables. Change is detected in your body. Watch this, and I want you to get what I'm saying. It passes to the receptor, the sensor. Then information is sent along to uh, the pathway of the control center which is my mind. Now, by this time, as an intercessor, what condition should my mind be in? When it gets to the control center, the control center is what turns around and say to you, stay calm, I got you. Because right there in the control center, watch this, watch this, watch this. That's what the Bible said, uh, 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 be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the spirit of your mind, the spirit of your mind, the spirit of your mind. Because by the time the information gets to your spirit of your mind, the spirit says, don't get excited. Don't get emotional about this one. I got it. And right then, the spirit begins to switch what the devil thought he was going to do. And the spirit ends up making it all turn out for your what? So a real intercessor. A real intercessor. Has a built-in control center. That handles your 
issues. I just said something right there. I just said something right there. I want you to think about it. I got something in my mind. I got, I got something in my mind. Some of y'all say, well, I, I, I don't, Dr. Biden, well, I, I, I prayed about it. Okay, well, let me ask you something. There's, everybody in this building right now has been through something. I don't care what it is, a broken arm, broken leg, whatever. I mean, whatever it is. Uh, hardship, divorce, death, whatever. Everybody in this building has been through something. But watch this. But watch this. I want you to see this clearly. I want you to see this real clear. Everybody has been through something. And I look in this building, and all of us are here. Do you know why we're here? We're here because somewhere in your life, the control center said, you all right. Okay. I, I, see, I can't get nobody. I can't, I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. I can't, I, I can't get nobody. And some of y'all don't even know when you got the victory. Oh, oh, you know you just start feeling better one day. Some, some, some of y'all don't even know when God gave it to you. Some of y'all, some of y'all don't even know when he brought you out of it. All you know is today you standing here with your hands up. And if you think about it real good about where you came from, you got to say, my God, how in the world did I get out of that? How in the world did God do that for me? Because my control center, oh, Rabasha, that's connected to God. That's what the Bible says. Let this mind be in you, which was all. is what says you're going to be all right. Woo. Woo. I can't get nobody to say nothing up in here. Man. Touch your neighbor and say, you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. Tell your neighbor, you're going to be all right. Tell your neighbor, say, 10 years ago, you didn't think you was going to be all right. But today you sitting here all right. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Look at your neighbor said last week I didn't think I was going to be all right. But I'm sitting here today and I'm all right. What does that mean? That means this time next year you're going to be all right. That means this time in 2020 you're going to be all right. Somebody better give God a praise right now. Y'all, y'all sit down for y'all make us go to church. Hey, ho shakabo say. I got something in my receptor. I got something in my control center that tells me that all things are working together for my good. Y'all gonna have to sit down for y'all mess the class up. It's supposed to be a class. It's supposed to be a class. It's supposed to be a class. But I think somebody is starting to understand spiritual matters. Woo, my God. Y'all, 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 y'all sit down. Y'all sit down. I got it. Y'all, y'all, y'all making me. Y'all making me. Hey, you already all right. You already, no, no, touch somebody. You watching by Facebook, put your hands on your head and said, I got a control center. Oh, somebody ought to give y'all a praise right I got a control center. Yeah, the devil think he gonna give me a breakdown. But my control center is sending another message that says I'm about to get a breakthrough. Yo, 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 sit down. Sit down. And so... And so, in the... <laughs> So, 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 
bottle in my receptor, in my sensor, in my receptor, in my sensor. And, 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 y'all, I just, listen, y'all. Y'all, I'm trying to get you the birthday dinner, so can y'all just, I'm trying to, I'm trying. But, 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 but here it is, that, that one thing about it, in my receptor, look at, look, look at the power, look at the power of who you are. And see, and see one thing about it, when you've been called to be an intercessor, you are, listen, you are equipped with something in your mind that you didn't ask for. In other words, in other words, you've been given a secret and a privilege. And now, how do I know that? Because everybody that's been called to be an intercessor is the people that's done walk through hell. And people are looking and wondering how in the world did you get through all of that? Y'all gonna make me preach up in here and I don't want to. Come on here somebody. But tell somebody it was built in my control center that I survived. You better give God it. It was built in my control center that I come through this thing. It was built in my control center that I become more than a conqueror. Well, sit down. So then, so then what? What goes into? What goes into my control center? Mother Gavis, what? What goes into my control center is not what comes out. What goes into my mind as an attack. What, come on somebody. What goes, in, I'm talking about an intercessor. I ain't talking about these people that I, I pray, Dr. But I'm talking about an intercessor. I'm talking about a person that's saying this is my job to pray. What goes into my control center is not what comes out. What goes into my control center goes in as an attack. But when it gets in there, the power of the Holy Ghost switch it. And so, when it go in, I'm crying. But when it come out, I'm shouting. You better hear God right now. You better hear God right now. You better hear God right now. Tell your neighbor, say, what went in? Didn't come out that way. Okay, what the enemy meant for good, God turned it. What the enemy meant for evil, God turned it for my good. Now tell your neighbor, neighbor, that happened in my control center, in the spirit of my mind. Oh, y'all sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. then I have, I have a receptor that receives information. I'm an intercessor, so I, I have a receptor that receives information. And then I have to process it through my control center so that my control center can tell me, here it is, can tell me what to do with this information. Some things that happens and you take into your receptive uh, 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 sensor, when it gets to the control center, the control center says, throw that out. And so by the time it come out on the other side and it hits the pathway of your effector, people are wondering why you're not bothered by it. And they say, well, you, you don't know what they said? Yeah, I do. But when it got to my control center, my control center wouldn't take me, wouldn't allow me to take that to the pathway of my effector. Because if I took it through the pathway of my effector, when it gets around to my variable, I must still be leaning. And I can't work for God lopsided. I have to stay balanced. So it is, a, watch this, it is a responsibility of the spirit of God in your mind to keep you balanced. That's why he has to constantly regulate what goes through your control setup. Because he says, if I don't switch this, if I don't give them a right understanding, then I'll never be able to use them in prayer because they will always be out of balance. Who got that? Raise your hand if you got what I just said. Raise your hand. See, this is the reason why. Watch this. This is the reason why. This is the reason why. When things, when you are called to be an intercessor, I gotta keep on saying it like that. When you are called to be an intercessor, this is why when things happen, 
you are not allowed, it is illegal for the intercessor to give a first response because the first response always belongs to the soulless realm. Always. I'm not hearing y'all say nothing to me. Pastor, did you? It belongs to the soulless realm. In other words, when things happen or you are confronted with things, you gotta, you gotta hold your reins and let the first responder take its course. You don't get involved in that. Because if you get involved with that, then you can't, you can't get out in time enough to heal your mind. Oh my God. You can't back up in time enough to heal what the control center is trying to say to you. Because now you have already reacted. Anybody getting this? It's like stuff happening, you go, I'm gonna cuss. Yeah, okay. Okay, she know. Somebody say, don't you? Don't. I, I want to say stuff, but I can't. I, I want to say something. Erica, people ain't gonna be honest no more. You know, you want to say. In my own life, you would already not have no teeth right now. Right now. You, you, you would be gumless right now. In my, in my own life, they would have been helping you up off the floor. So, you know, y'all, y'all, y'all gonna leave out of here tonight and be telling people, you better be glad for my variables. That's all I'm gonna say. You better be glad. You better, you better be glad I got a control center. Y'all, I, I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. Y'all better say something up in here. Now you, you listen, listen, because I prayed about it. I asked the Lord, can I get a gun one time? He said, no, not you. Not you. Not you, because I just shoot you first and then just say, well, you, oh, I'm sorry. No, no, my variables, your control center. Come on, somebody. You know, I just, 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 not just, you know, you, I be living to just see what it feels like to just shoot somebody. So I just give me a reason. Be working with your variables. <laughs> yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all. Y'all know what I'm talking about. All these little Joe Lewis is sitting up in here and, 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 and Tiger Woods, Tiger, what that boy named <laughs> the, the other boxer. No, no, no. God, God, God is bringing. And see, I'm going to tell you something about, about intercessors. How do you know when people are intercessors? Because they still have a fight in them. See, all God want to do is convert that thing. He want to convert that thing. Come on, somebody. You cannot be a push. Listen, you cannot be an intercessor and be a pushover. You cannot be an intercessor and be weak. I'm not giving you. You cannot be an intercessor and you are afraid and you tremble and you shake. I'm not hearing y'all. When you become an intercessor, it's like the Lord grooms you like they groom the people in the mob. He grooms you to keep a cold face. He grooms you not to be shaken. He grooms you not to shiver. I'm not hearing y'all. He grooms you to put it in your back pocket because everything that God allows, it's not for you to confront right now. It's for you to save it. Y'all sit down. I just said something right there. No, it's for your back pocket. Watch this. I'm finna, I'm finna, I'm finna show you something about this. <laughs> the control center allows you to have information. Watch this. Information brings your variables into balance. Watch this. Not what you do, but what you know. I told you this is a master class. Just a master class. I, I promise you. What am I saying? What am I saying? Okay, so sometimes you can, you can, you can, you can, the Lord can let you know something in the spirit. And, you know, because people, when you're not no intercessor and you're just a person that prays and you're just trying to love God, this, this is how it goes. See, God has to deal with all these little things because the levels the levels that you are about to operate on, you don't have time for this, this, this remedial stuff. This, you know, they talk about me, they hurt my, it's, it's like the Lord lets you, let you know things and he lets you save it. 
for the control center. Because it is the Lord's will that you know. That you know. Not that you do, but that you know. So then you know somebody that said something about you. It ain't for you to say, I heard what you say. It ain't even for you, watch this. It ain't even for you to reveal to them that you know. It's for you just to know. And say, God bless you. Because in the back of your head, while you looking at them right in their eyes, I know you. So the Lord done already told me who I need to stay away from. I don't have to come against you to know you. Is he teaching this class today? And too many intercessors, you lose your positioning in God. Because as soon as God show you something, you go trying to do something about it. No, that ain't where you do something about it. You do something about it from the control center. Okay, sit down, sit down, sit down. Show those three's husband for real. I got really good at it. He just, and I was, wham. And I hit him one time and he was like over in the corner, like, I don't, I don't know, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. And he was over there leaning. And so he said to me one day, Why you hit so hard? I would, I would hit the glove and he would be like, Why you hit so hard? And I said, I'm just, you know, I'm just training. You know, I was just like, Can you just lay the board out? I was like, I'm just training. I was, I just, I just want to get cut. I'm just, I'm just training. He said, but you know, you, it's like, you're going to have to lighten up because, I mean, you're hitting too hard. But see, I had an imbalance in my variables. And I was thinking about everybody ever did something to me. And I went, well. <laughs> Y'all ain't say that. My variable was off. It was out of balance. So I was about to whoop my trainer. But he wasn't the real enemy. What am I saying? You'll end up doing damage to the wrong people when your variables are off. You end up talking about the wrong people. You end up having an attitude with the people that God sent to bless you. You end up offending people that God is about to use to take you to your next level. I'm not hearing y'all. They got a million dollar seed for you. But because they don't look like they got no money, your variables will cause you to lose your blessing. Because you lean in, you step in, and you're on your toe in the back. But when you when you want to get that good swing in, you you know, and if somebody come at you, you know, you got your you got your but when your variable is off, it's like standing on a plank that's not balanced. 
and it's going wobbly like this, and you trying to fight the enemy. You ain't no intercessor. That's why you keep getting beat up, because you're not balanced. You fallen all into the enemy's fist because you own something that's not balanced. You cannot be a successful intercessor when your emotions are out of balance. You cannot be a successful intercessor. I'm not hearing y'all. When it's always something going on in your life that you cannot bring under a control. Who am I? You got to get your life under control. You got to stop majoring in the minor things and minoring in what's major. You got to stop arguing with boats while you're missing the ship. Your control center got to gotta bring you to a point where you said that's too low for me. Your control center ought to bring you to a point where you say, no, 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 no. If I engage in that, that's going to throw me off balance. I'm not hearing y'all. You know the Lord saved you from a fighting demon? Then you can't get into no argument. Because if I get over there and start arguing, then that's going to that's send me backwards. That's going to send me to the left. Who am I talking to? We got to start bringing every area of our life under control. If you know that there are people that ignite you, stay away from them. If you know that there are people that send your spirit into a way, come on somebody, shut them down, change your phone number. But if you're going to be an intercessor for God, you got to bring your variable back into balance. of stimulus and returns variable to homeostasis. Watch this. I'm going to read that one more time. The response of the effector feeds back to influence magnitude. The responsibility of the effector is to feed back to you the size something is. So you don't overreact to something that ain't worth two dollars. I'm not hearing y'all. Good Lord have mercy. I just said something right there. The effector says this ain't worth it. Don't spend your time on this. I'm not hearing y'all. And what does the effector do after that? It feeds. It feeds. Don't worry about this. This ain't big. This ain't worth two dollars. It feeds that back to your variable. And your variable say, okay, don't move. We're not going to move. Because, because the effector just fed me the magnitude of this situation. And the effector just told me, this ain't worth me getting upset about. This ain't worth me talking about. This ain't worth me repeating. This ain't worth me arguing about it. That's what my effector said. And your friend's gonna say, ain't you mad? No, I can't do that one right there. Don't you wanna go? No, I can't do that right there. I heard that I don't wanna hear. Let me let you hear I don't wanna hear. Let me show you I don't wanna see it. Why? Because my effector have given me the magnitude of what you're trying to show me and what you're trying to show me is nothing. Somebody, the homeostasis is about you. I promise you, you could hear that thing talking. Since I've been in this, I could hear that thing talking. Something happened in, in, in my 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 effect is that mm -mm, don't mess with that. Don't 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 even don't even address that. Don't do that. It ain't even worth it. Hang up the phone. Hang up the phone. Well, I just want to hang up the phone. Yeah. It is your family. Well, I, well, I'm just going to hang up the phone. Yeah. Then you get ready to hang up, and they say that one trigger word. Yeah. You almost made it off the phone. Yeah. You're like, I'm not going to deal with this, and I'm just not going to have Well, I just, well, I'm not going to, well, I just, well, you know what, I got to go. Well, I just, oh, hold up, hold, hold You just said what? You just said what? Because, wait a minute, what does that mean? What does that mean? 
That means I am in a ring where I did not hear what my effector was trying to feed me. So instead of me, watch this, instead of me going back into balance, my effector rested on the part that I was already down in. Wow. Wow. Okay, this is where you get the terminology. Pray for me, I feel so down. How did you get there? You didn't listen to your effector, because the purpose of the effector is to take you down. If you, if you don't hear what the control center is saying, if you don't hear the control center saying, do not mess with this. When the effector comes and say, it ain't worth two dollars. And you go against that. You're going to be down. You're going to feel down. Now, you just shift it from being an intercessor to, sis, will you just pray for me because I'm really going to. Y'all, I don't know if y'all, is, is, is anybody learning anything? Because see, what we want to do now, watch this. What we want to do now, this is who we want to be. When we are called to be intercessors, I close with this. I might make it in the next one. <laughs> we are called to be intercessors. So when the Lord calls you to be an intercessor, and he says to you, um, pray for Miss Cummings, or, or pray for her cousin, or, or the Lord calls you, pray for Lady Gordon. Pray for Pastor. Right away. Let me, get, let me help you with this. Right away. When you are called, called, I got I to gotta stress that word, called. When you're called to be an intercessor, <laughs> the enemy is always invited to the declaration of your assignment. Okay, can I say that again? Can I say that again? You said, I just feel the Lord call me to pray for Lady Boyd. Okay, but Lord called you to pray for Lady Boyd. And as and soon as you get to the altar, come in, Raquel. The Lord called me, stand right here, to pray for Lady Boyd. And so he sends the angel of the Lord to support me. Because he called me to pray for Lady Boyd. Can I use your sis? And the devil said, and I'm coming too. I'm coming too. Because that's what happened to Job. When God called him for an assignment, the Bible said in the first chapter, and Satan came too. I I'm not hearing y'all. Because the enemy has to hear the assignment so he can know what to attack. I'm not hearing y'all. And that's why God wants you to get this lesson. Because when you are called to be an, uh, oh my God. When you're called to be an intercessor, the first thing the enemy is coming after is your homeostasis. He's coming after your balance. Why? Because the devil already knows that if God called you, you got what it takes to get the job done. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. He ain't calling nobody that can't finish the work. He ain't calling nobody that can't birth it out. He not calling nobody that's going to quit in the middle. How do I know that? Because when you was a drug addict, you was the best one. Oh God, I said something like that. When you was a sinner, you were the best one. When you clubbed, everybody didn't want to club unless you came. I'm not giving y'all. You were the best of the best when you lived for the devil. And that's why the enemy knows your potential. Somebody better say something. He knows that you will never give up. He knows you will never let it go. He knows that you will never crumble. That's why the devil say, if I don't stop this one, whatever God gives to do it's going to be done somebody give God a praise right now hey the enemy know you the enemy know you back about himself oh, the enemy know you how do I know because he said because I used to use you hey I know who you are because I used to use you Y'all better give God a praise right there. Hey, I know who you are. I know who you are. I 
know who you are because I used to wake you up at 3 o'clock in the morning. I used to keep you up all night with your man. Who am I talking to right now? I used to make you drink until you couldn't stand up. You did it for me. You served me with everything that you had. And now I done lost you. I got to try to stop you because I know what your potential is. Somebody give God a shout right now. Somebody better give him a praise up in here. You better give him a praise up in here. Because the Holy Ghost, he's identifying with you tonight who you are and why the devil is afraid of you. You better give God a praise right now. Hey! He don't want to let you go. He don't want to let you go. He still want to use you. person some of y'all sitting in here tonight feeling all shame of where you been in your past no that was your real identification tell somebody <laughs> I'll do anything for the Lord because I did everything for the devil now I know what he's trying to do now I know why he's personally attacking me now I know why every time I turn around it's something because he wants my variables because he knows that I can't fight on an unbalanced territory who am I talking to up in here somebody better give God a praise for your control center
issues. It's, 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 it's really a little bit more profound, you know. So y'all, y'all just forgive us. It was a little birthday teach tonight, but, but uh, you know, because the mind is somewhere else too. But uh, I, I told the Lord I wanted Him to draw the people that was ready to walk in masterclass level, because I cannot, because of what I've walked through. And what the Lord has trained me in now, I cannot, a lot of things have changed. I cannot teach from that elementary level anymore because I'm not there. I mean, everything that I'm teaching you now is what the Lord trained me in. During the course of everything that I walked through, when I couldn't go to church, when the paparazzi was chasing me, I get to stay home. And God took me up. I told somebody, but Antoinette will tell you, I used to be in my prayer room almost every morning, and the Lord stopped me one day, and he said, don't come in here again until I draw you in here. And he said, I don't even want you to make this a common thing. I don't want you to make it. I got to go to my prayer room. And so I can't go until the Lord draws me. Yeah, I pray every day, but when I go into that presence, it's because the Father wants to speak something to me that is profound and it is divine. And so I wait for him to draw me to that room. And this is what the Lord is talking about. He's talking about me uh, uh, being allowed to bring a people to another level. Where you walk in another level. You think in another level. And you don't operate like some little slipping and sliding Christian. That, oh, let's pray. Oh, Jesus. No, 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 no. I'm going to pray with intelligence. I'm going to pray. I'm going to know exactly what is going on in the spirit. We're going to go back and revisit this. And this is how powerful this is. And I want to tell you this. Yes, we're now. Now, we are in the hermeneutic loop, and we're in the beginnings, and so if you're just coming, you don't want to miss it. But what I want to say to you about this, I use this diagram for you personally, but the next time you see this diagram, we're going to be talking about praying for China, and we're going to be talking about what are the things that's causing it to go out of balance, uh, praying for Korea. I, 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 is anybody getting what I'm saying? When the Lord give us prayer assignments, we're going to be able to look at this chart and be able to govern the prayer by this chart. We're going to be able to pray what is going on, wait until God take us to the control center of that situation, and we're going to pray what it should be coming out. I'm not hearing y'all. And God will tell us the magnitude of the warfare. Is this something that the devil is just trying? Or is this something we got to go into the third dimension and pray from heaven down? Are y'all getting what I'm saying? It's time for us to go to the master class level. Somebody give God a praise for pastor as he comes. Somebody put your hands together for the woman of God. Come on, put your hands together. Y'all can do better than that. Oh, my God. Come on, lift those hands for a moment. Just worship God right where you are. Come on, begin to tell God, thank you, Lord, for this word tonight. Come on, if you're grateful for this teach tonight, lift those hands up and open up your mouth and begin to thank God. Hallelujah. Come on, open your mouth and begin to thank God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You there watching my internet, lift those hands up and begin to thank God. Hallelujah. God, we thank you tonight, Lord. God, we thank you, Lord. Amostasis, God, we thank you, Lord, for the revelation, God, of our control center. Because some of us was about to mess up. But God, thank you for prayer, God, that brings control to the center of our walk with you, God. Lord, thank you tonight for understanding. Because you told us with all of our getting, get understanding. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, that on this night, Lord, that you allowed this woman of God that you gave birth to on this night 59 years ago. Lord, just speak a word of life into our lives. And so, Lord, we open our mouths for a moment and we just worship you, God. Oh, my God. Yes, Lord. I need you to really open up your mouth and just begin to worship God right where you are. He says he inhabits your worship 
he says he desires the fruit of your lips and you can't really worship God with your mouth closed you got to open up your mouth to worship God hallelujah if you're in this place come on give God an audible worship fill this atmosphere for a moment just a moment everybody open up your mouth just begin to worship God oh hallelujah Jesus hallelujah Jesus God we worship you we exalt you we bless you God we give you glory we give you honor Lord for your servant God and we bless we bless her tonight God and we honor her tonight God hallelujah Jesus thank you the Bible declares that Lord that those that come forth Lord and share the word in ministry God God they're not just worthy of single honor but they're worthy of double honor and so Lord we thank you for an opportunity not only to receive from the woman of God but Lord just sow into her life God tonight if you will be here tonight she's going to be she right here oh there she go I just saw her walk out and how many know we want to bless her tonight? How about that? Amen. I know she said she's 59 and she don't want the dollar. But I want, I, I want to sow double honor into her life tonight. And everyone, we, I, I'm going to call the 60s so we can do a nice 120 even. Amen. But if everyone that will come and take your envelope out of my hand and say, I'll sow at least. Now, God may tell you to sow 1,200 or 1,000 or 500. Let me not limit you. But if you will sow at least a $120 seed into the woman's God life tonight, I want you to come. I'm the first. Amen. I want you to come and get an envelope out of my hand if you'll do that. Amen. Amen. If she's touched your life, Pastor, I'll sow at least $120. The minimum is that that's what I'll sow. Come get an envelope out of my hand. You can make it right out to her. If you're making a check, you can make it right to her. Now, while y'all come and get these envelopes, we got a birthday cake for her. Put your hands together. Y'all stand up now. Y'all ain't that old. Everybody standing on your feet. And this cake is vegan. It is a vegan birthday cake. Amen. So she got to, let's sing happy birthday one more time, everybody, ready? Happy birthday, Dr. Biden. Come on, put your hands together, give God a shout. Now, come on. I don't want you to lose this. Everyone say, Pastor, I'll sow a double seed. Come on, tonight. Walk out of that seed, take an envelope, and place that seed. And listen, if I can't sow 120, I'll sow 60, 59. Come on, get an envelope out of my hand tonight. Come on, move, 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 move. Everybody should be moving. There should be a still person in here. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to use the machine, you can. Is that a problem? Yeah, if you need to do a debit card, credit card, you can, they'll do that. This is her. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you, bless you. Come on, we're going to bless the woman of God tonight. We're going to bless the woman of God tonight. Sure you can. Sure you can. If you don't have it tonight, it's best. I don't really have it. I'm going to bring it back. Come get an envelope tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Come on. Everybody, whatever you got tonight, I'm sowing. Give me that and get more envelopes. Here you go. Everybody get a an offering envelope. Whatever you go so tonight. Like she said today, if you only got five dollars, you only got a dollar. I know that you're giving to me out of love. And that will still that's gonna bless my life. It's always what you give it out of that makes the difference. Everybody needs to have an envelope tonight. We just want to be a blessing. I guess the Bible says those who bless us with their spiritual gift. Amen. Fine, fine. Yes, yes. Fantastic. I need more envelopes. Give one second. Everybody get an envelope, whatever you have tonight. I'm going to sow it into the life of the woman of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, while you prepare, you, you got my track. You got it? You can tweak it out. You can bring it up. Now listen, don't forget next week when you come to class. It's a kingdom mindset. Let me hear ya. This is how we come into class, right? Where am I eating? How, would you all come into class? Because I'm going to check you at the door. Where you at? Let me see you. You're at your binder in the front. You should have your hermeneutic look right in the front. Let me hear you. Let and we'll get you some home thesis. Um paper as well so you can have both and then you should have some notes so I'm gonna come around I'm, I'm gonna be the note checker let me see your notes let me see all right this is you right all right we got notes okay because I'm, I'm a note taker so you know I can check your notes against my notes okay all right this is pretty good okay she, she could have been a couple more pages in there okay to, to tell you, don't we get too spiritual now listen that's why you want to get the tape. Let me know, when this is being taught, you can't gravitate all of this. You need to get, if you don't have to get a DVD, get a CD. So you can just listen to it, sit down, do your study. How many of you were in college? As soon as you left your class, you went to the library. So you could review them notes, all right? And so this is going to bless your life. What? Here we go. Yes, we go. Here we go. How I many? that's our theme song. How many of y'all are on Team Pastor Boy? How many of y'all are on Team Dr. Johnson? Uh, Lady Boyd, Lady Boyd, you didn't say nothing about my team. You didn't shout for my team. Okay. Well, let's try that one more time. How, who's on for Team for Pastor Boyd? Yeah. Team for Dr. Johnson? Okay. We're talking about roll up in here. Okay. Take that seed, hold it up to the Lord, whatever you're going to sow tonight. Everybody who's sowing a seed, whatever seed you're sowing tonight, hold it up high. Come on. Lord, we thank you. And God, for everyone with that would dare to plant a seed into this woman of God's life. Lord, this prophetess, this evangelist, this mother, God, this midwife. God, I decree and declare a hundredfold return and then some. And I decree ridiculous favor in their lives because they dared to bless your servant, God. And God, I thank you from this night forth, they are going to know because they planted this seed that, God, you have decreed.